under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Call the roll. Commissioner Perigen? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. Commissioner Denning is absent. Commissioner Nash? Here. Mayor Wilkerson? Here. Rewards and recognitions, we have a special treat tonight. Uh, I'll go ahead and invite our fellows in the Maroon Church to come up, if you would, and line up in our well right along here in the U. As they come up, I want to tell you just a little bit about these uh, people who have come to help us and show us uh, a little bit about team sportsmanship and so forth. But this is, this is Team Kentucky from our flag football crew of, from Special Olympics, and I want you to know that they represented Kentucky in the... Uh, in the USA uh, Special Olympics held in Seattle and came away with what you see on their chest, those bronze medals. So we want to acknowledge them and tell you who they are. Our athletes are David Sexton, Brandon Johnson, James Jordan, David Pl Plested, Randy Lennon, Sammy Fetz, uh, Felt, excuse me, Evans Johnson, Willie Kirby, Killian Day, Coaches are Holly Vincent, Michael Justice, and Jen Seabold. So if you'd join me and help him recognize these great athletes here today. so much for coming tonight and allow us giving us a chance to recognize you and your accomplishments and we wish you well as you try next year to head for the the gold next time all right thank you so much thank you all, thank you all. congratulations you. next up i think we have uh, operation plot pride And you, you, you guys are welcome to slip out if you choose to. You're welcome to stay if you like. All right, you're up. Good afternoon, Hello, good afternoon. Mayor and Commissioners. And I uh, just wanted to um, come and give an award today. Um, I'm with Operation Pride, and we are 25 years old this year. Uh, and a number of years ago, we started giving what we call Pride Awards, and they are presented to homeowners, um, uh, commercial business owners, sometimes neighborhoods who make improvements to their property. Um, this month, we have a residential Pride Award to give, and I'm going to pull that up really quick here. And if, um, if Timmy Hunt would come up and join me, uh, 1737 Sunrise, South Sunrise, is the, uh, is the recipient this month. Let me just pull this up. next to the 69 to the left yeah there you go thank you um, sunrise this is the before picture of the improvements um, on 730 1737 south sunrise um, <clears throat> this is during the renovation of the exterior of the front yard um, and these two are the after pictures and as you can see there was a uh, quite a bit of landscaping work and the, in spe specifically the driveway and the sidewalk, you can definitely see a difference. It was gravel over on the other side. Um, and I believe they've also benefited from uh, some um, city projects, which is wonderful. Uh, and I love the fact that you kept those mature trees. Thank you very much. So we would like to present you with the July Residential Pride Award for the improvements that you have made to 1737. South Thank Sunrise Drive. Much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. I could just. Yes, sir. Uh, Katie, if. Uh, I know this is unusual, but Commissioner Denning has sent me a text and told me he cannot, he cannot hear the meeting on his TV at home, and I do not want to be responsible for Commissioner Denning being angry, so if somebody in the tech room could turn it up for Joe, that would be awesome. 
hopefully they heard you in the tech room. So. I hope so. <laughs> I did my part, Joe. Well, and, and, and I just <laughs> got it too, so we're good. All right, are there any other awards or recognitions? Other than we recognize Joe's watching at home tonight. That's right. <laughs> All right, we have a public hearing tonight, and the purpose of this public hearing is to review the proposed use of municipal aid program liquid fuel tax funds and coal severance and processing tax mineral service uh, tax funds. Ms. Kanzler, are you up for tonight? Thank you all. Um, again, Melissa Kanzler with City Engineer with Public Works. Uh, we are here once again. We come to you guys annually to explain uh, the use of the municipal aid and coal and mineral taxes that come to the city of Bowling Green. Um, we want to also explain and hope educate those watching, you know, what this is for and why we receive it. Uh, first of all, mus municipal aid, uh, we refer to it as the liquid fund, liquid fuel tax or LFT. Uh, this is a tax collected by the state. It is a tax on every gallon of gas that uh, the citizens buy. And then they redistribute this uh, tax to municipalities like Bowling Green, uh, and we are to put those to use for our roadway network improvements. Uh, real quickly, um, the fund activity, as projected, thanks to our finance department, uh, right now we have a current fund balance of $1,420,750. Uh, we are projecting interest revenues and uh, tax receipts to and transfer from the general fund uh, to total $2,389,050. We are proposing to spend approximately $2,585,000. And uh, part of that $2.585 million includes our annual street resurfacing or overlay project, uh, estimated two million, our sidewalk curb and gutter rehabilitation uh, program at 100,000, a traffic signal installation, as well as another turn lane improvement at another intersection here in town. So with that in mind, the projected ending balance after those expenditures is $1,224,000. Real briefly, and feel free to stop me uh, if you have questions or you feel I need to clarify something. Um, for FY19, our overlay or street resurfacing or our paving project, uh, we have $200 million to spend. Uh, we have proposed about 18 miles of resurfacing, and that list is included in your packet. Uh, again, that's a preliminary list um, that we've, we have vetted that with the utility companies to make sure they don't have a project that we pave a street and they come right behind us and dig it up. Uh, but depending on the bids that come in, um, the prices may dictate we may have to take some streets off or we may hopefully be able to add some streets to that list. Uh, as with every other year, there are things outside of paving that we are mandated to do. Uh, we always want to upgrade our handicap ramps at intersections where we're paving. Um, with any street, there's some areas that need re full rehab and some repair work before we pave that street. Um, this year, I know we've identified one concrete intersection that needs uh, to be removed due to its age and uh, um, degrading, and we're going to put that back with asphalt. So hopefully we can capture everything that we've presented to you in your packet uh, and maybe even more. I think the um, bids come in on August 15th, so we will be back to you with that hopefully um, in the near future. Uh, the second um, LFT or municipal aid um, expenditure is our $100,000 sidewalk curb and gutter rehab. Uh, hopefully this will be our last year. We're putting money in for Butler Way uh, sidewalk rehab. We've kind of done a multiple year accumulation of this money. Um, the sidewalk that is there now is very um, broken. There's a lot uh, missing. There's people parking across it. With that, it has created drainage issues. So with this project, there are a lot of needs outside of just sidewalk. We have some drainage issues and, and concerns to deal with as well. Um, the good thing about this location is it coordinates with our Pedago Park um, pedestrian improvements that just kicked off, I think, today for design. Uh, we do intend to tie Butler Way with Pedago Park um, in the end, and Butler Way also backs up to the backside of Dishman McGinnis as well. It all comes together. So we'll have a connection, parks and schools, and hopefully build on what we have there. And finally, as part of the LFT um, expenditures, we have two intersection improvement projects that we're proposing. One is a much needed um, signalized intersection at Dishman Lane and Industrial Drive. 
Um, if you've driven that area, you know it's really hard to pull out onto Dishman Lane. The type of traffic, the industrial, the semi-trucks, um, combined with the school traffic on that roadway makes it really difficult. So we're proposing to design and build a signal at Dishman and industrial and any necessary turn lanes that the engineer feels is necessary to move that traffic more safely and efficiently. And finally, we are estimating $160,000 for improvements um, on the south leg of Small House Road at Campbell Lane. Uh, we finished phase one on the north side of Campbell Lane, but this is to address AM peak traffic, uh, people coming into work in the morning, approaching Campbell Lane, adding some extra turn lane storage for some of those cars in that right turn lane. So um, those are two intersections that we felt required priority and hopefully you know we'll have have those designs done fairly quickly and can bid those projects. The second tax that the state puts on um, um, coal and mineral haulers, it's called the coal and mineral severance tax. Um, they tax those people and they determine that Warren County is uh, I guess qualifies to receive uh, these revenues from this tax and it's put on coal and mineral haulers given their impact to our roadway network. So in turn that money that they give back to cities and counties like Warren County we are to apply to transportation related projects. And similar to the liquid fuel tax our fund activity is we have approximately $115,000 in fund balance. Uh, we're projecting a coal severance tax income of $39,500. Um, what we are proposing this year in conjunction with the IT department is a traffic signal switch upgrade at $75,000. And I'm, I'm going to try to explain this. It's more of an IT project. But basically it's upgraded equipment within our traffic signal cabinets. And what that does is help us remotely connect to the signals. Uh, it helps us make the use of the fiber connectivity as our signal system grows. So these are necessary upgrades. Uh, again, it relates back to our transportation network and helps our signals and intersections operate more effectively. After this expenditure, projected ending fund balance is $80,180. Are there any questions? Um, public hearing so if there's any member of the public that had a comment or question with regarding to the liquid fuels tax and coal severance and processing tax and mineral severance tax this would be the opportunity for you to speak seeing no one we'll thank miss Kanzler and close that part of the public hearing thank you Oswald, do you have any comments tonight I'm happy to report that there is no need for a closed session tonight <laughs> so you. I have no comments <laughs> thank you so much all right, uh, approval of minutes for two meetings, the regular meeting on June 19th, 2018, and our special meeting on June 26th, 2018. So moved. Second. Second. Urgent second by we. Corrections, please call the roll. Urgent. Yes. Williams. Yes. Nash. Yes. Wilkerson. Yes. Municipal Order 2018-127. Municipal order approving the transfer of Brian E. Chambers to the position of Assistant Fire Chief Training and the promotion of Jason C. Brooks to the position of Assistant Fire Chief Prevention in the Fire Department. Second. Yes, uh, with the recent promotion of Rob Gillum to Deputy Fire Chief, uh, we have some opportunity for uh, promotion and some vacancies to be filled, so I'll ask Chief Colson to come up and make his recommendations for a transfer and a promotion. Good afternoon. Hopefully Joe can hear me. Um, during the latest uh, promotional testing cycle, uh, Brian Chambers successfully completed the testing process for each of the assistant chief positions uh, in prevention, suppression, and in training. Uh, and he was promoted to the assistant chief of prevention back in November of last year. Um, as uh, Mr. Meisel mentioned, Rob Gellum's recent promotion to deputy chief has created the vacancy in our uh, assistant chief of training position. And I'm here uh, this evening to recommend assistant chief Brian Chambers uh, transfer to the training division where uh, I believe his knowledge, skills, and strengths uh, in teaching and uh, instructing will serve the department quite well. Uh, this transfer will create uh, an opening in our prevention division and with that I'm I'm here this evening recommending Jason Brooks be promoted to uh, assistant chief. Um, a brief bio on, on Jason. 
Uh, he uh, has 10 years of service with the department, the majority of which has been with the prevention division. Uh, he was hired back in 2008, promoted to the rank of sergeant in 2013, and has served as company commander, uh, senior fire investigator since August of 2015. Uh, notably, Jason served in the Navy for seven and a half years where he completed the Law Enforcement Academy. Um, Jason has completed numerous courses and earned uh, certifications in uh, firefighting, hazmat, and he's also an emergency medical technician. He has spent many, uh, many weeks in Alabama at Alabama's Fire College, uh, completing fire investigator uh, training in both levels one and two, and also fire inspector training uh, both levels one and two in uh, at Alabama. He's completed courses at the National Fire Academy. He's been a major part of the, the Bowling Green Fire Department and the ATF Arson, Arson Task Force. He is a certified fire investigator with the International Association of Arson Investigators, and he has attended leadership classes through Western Kentucky University. Uh, I'm confident in saying both of these individuals are prepared uh, to perform their duties uh, in their new respective positions, and it's my pleasure to recommend both uh, the transfer uh, of Brian and Jason's promotion to you this evening. If I can get both of them to stand, Jason and Ms. Brian, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Comments or questions? He stood up. <laughs> Congratulations, both of you. We're excited for you. I'm sorry Joe's not here to harass him, so we'll just keep going. That's right. Any other comments? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Thank you. Good luck to you, gentlemen. You are welcome to slip out if you like. Municipal Order 2018-128. Municipal order approving the promotion of Jared W. Maris to the position of police sergeant in the police department. I moved. Second. A peerage and second by Nash. Mr. Mosley. It's, uh, again, with the retirement of Sean Helbig, uh, one of our sergeants, effective July 1st, has created another opportunity in the police department. I'd ask uh, Chief Hawkins to come up and make his recommendation for this position. Thank you, Mr. Mosley. Uh, Mayor and Commission, it's uh, my pleasure to be here tonight before you to recommend Detective Jared Maris uh, for the promotion to Sergeant. Um, Jared uh, and his family are with us tonight. I would ask Jared to stand while I do my best to speak nicely about him. Slim, are you getting pictures? Do I'm I trying. Need, do I need to move out of your way? I'm not even sure I'm supposed to do this. Hold on. Okay. Um, Jared was hired November 7, 2005 with the Bowling Green Police Department, born and raised in Frankfort, Kentucky. Uh, grew up there, came to Western Kentucky University uh, several years ago now, graduated from there. And uh, prior to being hired as a Bowling Green Police Officer, also interned with the Bowling Green Police Department. He is a graduate of Western Hills High School in Frankfort, Kentucky. Uh, he also has BA in Sociology from Western Kentucky University. Um, Jared has served in a couple of, of key areas in the Bowling Green Police Department over the years. Um, one is he's, he's the senior detective, so he's been in our criminal investigations division for a number of years now. He's also uh, been a, uh, was a long-serving member of the critical response team. Um, during that time in both those areas, he uh, achieved or attended significant training uh, for both of those positions. He has been to the Southern Police Institute Homicide Investigation Course. He has been to the Reed Interview and Interrogation Course, uh, the Southern Police Institute um, Sexual Assault Investigations Course, the uh, Child Forensics Interviewing Certification Program at the National Child Ad Advocacy Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, he's also um, been to Child Death Investigations Course. Um, while serving as part of our critical response team, he has uh, completed the Emergency Response Unit Tactics School, uh, the FBI Advanced Hostage Rescue School, and the Regional Counter Drug Training Academy, uh, completing both levels one and two in Meridian, Mississippi. He served as a crime scene processor. He certified in uh, police bicycle patrol 
Uh, as I mentioned before, he's, he served on our critical response team for a number of years. Um, he is one of our police training officers that we rely on to train younger officers. Um, he has served, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, as a criminal investigator for a number of years, um, working on uh, many, many serious um, uh, cases over those years to include homicides, robberies, uh, and other types of serious investigations. Um, recently, he served as an acting sergeant uh, and did a fantastic job during uh, his time in that acting role. Uh, tonight with him to help celebrate are his wife Autumn, uh, daughter Riley, son Jackson, daughter Josie. His father uh, Jeff Maris is also here with us along with his stepmother Anita and uh, um, who is not here but I think it's important to mention he's not the only police officer in his family. His brother Derek uh, is a member of the Frankfurt Police Department so uh, uh, policing uh, runs strong in their family. So um, I have the greatest confidence uh, in Jared's ability uh, to take on the roles and responsibility uh, of that of a supervisor in the Bowling Green Police Department. Um, he has the respect of the men and women in the Bowling Green Police Department. He's already an informal leader and we would like to formalize that. So I have uh, great confidence and recommend him for promotion. Thank you. Congratulate you. Comments or questions? Please call the roll. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Forward to the next phase of your career. Expect to hear more out of you, too. Yeah. So, yeah you're, you're welcome to slip out if you choose to. And I know we're quite entertaining, but I probably got other <laughs> things to do as well. Municipal Order 2018-129. Municipal order approving the transfer of Jared C. Poteet to the position of code enforcement inspector in the Neighborhood and Community Services Department. Back in April, we uh, transferred Tim Butts over to uh, a building inspector, which created a, a vacancy on, on the code, in, code inspection side. And um, there we went out for interviews. 27 people applied. 12 were deemed to be, meet the minimum qualifications. And then there were nine candidates selected for interviews. Two of those nine uh, accepted other positions during the time frame then, uh, during, during that time frame. And then there were seven candidates interviewed by uh, Brent Childers and James Knapper and Tiger Tooley. And of those seven, uh, Mr. Jared Poteet, uh, police officer for eight years was selected uh, for the position of code inspector, code enforcement inspector. Uh, Jarrett is an advanced police officer, served several years on the critical response team, uh, attended the Southern Police Institute, and uh, now we bring to you uh, this recommendation for code enforcement inspector, Jared Poteet. And I think he is here with us tonight in the back. Congratulations, Jared. Hope you get to spend additional time with your family on that new schedule. So, any comments or questions? Please call roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Congratulations again. Municipal Order 2018 130. Municipal order approving the probationary appointments of Kelsey B. Ferris and Kyle J. Williams to the position of communications dispatcher in the police department. Second. Second by. I believe we are currently six dispatchers short at the moment or so. Tonight we bring to you two recommendations for hire. Uh, these two came from a, a, a lengthy process. 32 people applied, uh, 16 completed and required were the required paperwork, took the law enforcement suitability test. Six were polygraphed and three went through a, th a thorough background investigation. Uh, two candidates were interviewed by Melanie Watts, Michael Delaney, Penny Bowles, and Amelia Bowen from police, along with Tiger Tooley from HR. And two, rec two candidates are being recommended for your approval tonight. The first one being Kelsey Ferris, 
Uh, Kelsey is a registration clerk at Medical Center Emergency Department, been there for three years. Also has, also has previous customer service experience. She has a bachelor's degree with the concentration in international affairs and as well as Arabic, Arabic, sorry, Arabic language. Uh, second uh, candidate we bring to you tonight is Mr. Kyle Williams. Uh, worked with uh, Dark Container for almost four years. Uh, also has previous bank customer service manager experience and other previous customer service experience. He has a bachelor's degree in sociology with a minor in criminology. I think uh, one of those candidates is here, Kelsey. Uh, uh, if, Kelsey, if you'll please stand. And we ask for your, your approval for these recommendations. Congratulations, Kelsey. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the work. Are there any comments or questions? No. Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilferson? Yes. Thank you very much. Municipal Order 2018-131. Municipal Order approving the probationary appointment of Denise A. Gillen to the position of Office Associate in the Public Works Department. So moved. Williams, second. As you can see, we are uh, filling some vacancies tonight, and this one was in the Fleet Division. Uh, and, and get this, we had 98 people apply for um, the vacancy in this d division as well as human resources. 56 candidates were selected to perform computer skills testing. 37 uh, actually showed up for the testing. Of those 37, 16 were referred to the departments for consideration, uh, referred to fleet, and then uh, four of those were interviewed by Chris Crow, Robert Kirby, Randy Phelps, and, and Tiger Tooley. Um, the recommendation to you tonight is for Denise Gilland uh, to take on this office associate position in Fleet. Denise has worked with Community Action, uh, Go BG Transit for over three years as the vehicle administrator and safety security officer and has a lot of experience with uh, the, the maintenance of the buses and Denise is with us here tonight in the back row with Chris. And we ask for your approval uh, for, for Denise. Congratulations to you. Work together, and uh, you've, made a, you've made an excellent choice. She, she'll make you a good one. She does know she's working with Chris, though, right? Yeah. Okay. She can handle Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Comments? Arrington? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Municipal Order 2018-132. Uh, Municipal Order approving the probationary appointment of James Adam Shelley to the position of envir environmental technician in the Public Works Department. Moved. Motion by Nash. Uh, Williams, Mr. This, uh, this environmental technician position uh, is a new position that we voted on and approved with our FY19 budget uh, in the Public Works Department. Um, this is to help meet uh, the recently issued requirements of the um, small MS4, uh, the 2018 small municipal separate stormwater system permit that we received back in mid-April. Uh, there's a series of programs and actions that we have to take, put into play. Uh, we, we studied this uh, during budget, whether or not we wanted to go up, just uh, hire a consultant and, and go through all that to get a lot of things done. But um, Mr. Shelley, James Adam Shelley, uh, was an intern in our public works department. It's been there for four years and is a very capable gentleman. And so we felt this was a good move for us to go ahead and hire him to perform uh, a lot of these requirements that we need for the, the uh, MS4. Uh, his first year will basically, he'll pay for himself with his first year salary by uh, performing the, um, or taking care of the update to the stormwater management manual. That's a very lengthy process. And so uh, it provides general rules and uh, parameters for which drainage is to, to happen within the city. So uh, Greg and others have, have 
vetted Mr. Shelley. Uh, does he go? He goes by James, I believe. He just received his Master of Science in Geoscience. He's got numerous publications, uh, did his thesis pertaining to the influences of injection wells on urban karst hydrology. So I've been told he's uh, smarter than Matt Powell, so, so be careful. But we, we, we recommend the appointment to Mr. Sh James Shelley tonight. And Greg is here to fill in any gaps. Comments or questions? Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2018-133. Municipal Order approving the appointment of Hilda Sarver to the Housing Authority of Bowling Green. I love it. Arigen, second by Nash. Any comments or discussion? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2018-134. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2018-55 for Cisco SmartNet annual renewal from JBK Network Consulting LTD of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the amount of $69,361.55. Moved. Second. William, second. The IT department is in need of uh, maintenance coverage of its hardware equipment and some related software. They went out for bid. Uh, this was just a straight low bid. I think they received five bids uh, from different parties. Uh, the Cisco equipment includes things like switches, firewalls, the phone system, our wireless equipment, and supports our overall infrastructure. And uh, JBK was the, uh, I'm sorry, is that right? JBK was the low bid on this um, proposal, and Lynn Hartley is here tonight if you all have any questions. Comments or questions? Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2018-135. Municipal Order Authorizing Public Safety Software Subscription Services from Infor Public Sector Incorporated in the amount of $66,763.21. So moved. Second. Arigen, second by Williams. Mr. Nelson. Another IT item. Uh, this is just our annual maintenance for our public safety software through Infor. It's uh, basically a sole source. Uh, we have uh, a price here in front of us for 66 seven sixty three twenty one. 21 uh, In your memo, it kind of breaks that down of what that will be used for. Again, Lynn Hartley is here to answer any questions you have. Comments or questions? Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2018-136. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2018-57 for aluminum bleachers for the soccer fields at Preston Miller Park from Toadvine Enterprises Incorporated of Fisherville, Kentucky in the amount of $33,962. Second. As approved in the budget, we are uh, close to completing four new soccer fields at Preston Miller. Uh, with those soccer fields, we'll need some bleachers for the, um, the fans to watch games, participants. And we went out for bid, we received two bids, Parks went out for bid and received two bids. And this was a low bid, low, low cost bid. Uh, we're recommending to go with Toadvine Enterprises out of Fisherville, Kentucky. I believe we've had some business with them before and Brent Belcher is here to answer any questions you might have. What was the name of the company again? Toad Vine Enterprises. <laughs> well, you like those people at Toad Vine, huh? <laughs> Are there any comments or questions? Not sure where Fisherville is, but they're in Kentucky. <laughs> right there by Toad Vine. <laughs> Thank you, Slim. <laughs> Please call the roll. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. For 2018-137. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2018-58 for fire department equipment from various vendors in an amount not to exceed $245,000. So moved. Virgin, second. I'm going to ask uh, Jason Colson to come up, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover the basics, but he's going to come up and fill in the gaps. But basically, this was kind of a new idea that the fire department came up with that I really liked. Um, instead of 
buying stuff all during the year, having to go out for bid every time they need something. Uh, they looked at their overall needs for the next 12 months, uh, which would be safety, public safety supplies, loose equipment, safety items. Uh, it looked at all the vendors they bought from in the past. Uh, so, and they, they put this bid out and they made everybody bid a percentage of the, I think it's the published retail price that each company lists. And so uh, it's a very, it looks like a very thorough exercise. And what they did is they broke it down by each piece of equipment that they needed. They sent this out to like nine vendors. And of those nine vendors, they selected s seven of those vendors were awarded some piece of the pie on the equipment uh, that they are going to be buying in the next uh, 11 and a half months now. And each company bid on a bit a percentage discount of their, uh, as I mentioned, their retail price. Jason uh, can can add more details to that, but that's the basis of this. I thought it, it was a good exercise. We feel like it's going to save us money uh, doing all, all one big package and getting, there's some pretty steep discounts as you look through your packet. Uh, there's, there's some cases where there's 40 and 50 percent discounts on retail price equipment that the fire department will be needing during the year. And so uh, Jason can answer any questions you have on this, on this bid but it was basically low, low bid based on the higher amount of discount on each item that they were requesting. Jason, you have anything to add to that? She did a, I thought she did a wonderful job. Okay. I'm, I'm afraid I'll mess that up. So, okay. yeah. I was afraid I would mess it up. So. <laughs> I know you're very familiar with bids. Have you seen other agencies use this type of I, I was familiar with the city of Louisville does something similar. And of course, uh, the state of Kentucky has a master master agreement, procurement agreement. So it's kind of utilizing the models that I'd seen there and trying to tie it into you know, what we what we do here. Uh, the main purpose was to reduce the amount of time that it takes to solicit and quotes and wait on responses from vendors and 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 we have uh, we have compared uh, now that we've received the discounts we pulled some some recent invoices from from vendors and it appears as though we're going to um, pay less for for certain items than we have traditionally so it should be a, a win-win for uh, for the city for example, yeah, yeah, for example, let's say in October it's time to buy some helmets. Well, let's see, who, who got the helmets? Well, uh, on the list here it looks like America's Bravest got it and we get a 40% discount. Call them up, order them up, you're done. Yeah, so. and, and traditionally we would, you know, solicit, you know, two to three quotes. We had, you know, depending on the product, we had up to nine bidders. Uh, so we, we uh, increased the competition. Uh, and hopefully reduce our, our cost per product. So that turns out. Sure. Okay. Just a one year bid. It is. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. We we're going to try it for a year. Um, you know, the nice thing about uh, this is the manufacturer's price increases, their published retail price increases, the discount remains the same. So there is no going back and forth, so yeah. on and so forth. We so lock these discounts in. Discounts in for twelve months. That's correct. So, but right. I'm answering your question. Erigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2018-158. Municipal Order Authorizing and Accepting Minmer 2018-53 for Small House Road Improvements Phase 2 from Scotty's Contracting and Stone LLC of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the amount of $2,270,773.71. I'll move. Second. Motion by Perrigen. Second. Phase two of the Small House Road project will extend from Highland to Roselawn. Uh, we went out for bid. Uh, these bids were to consist of ex excavation, utility, re utility relocation, storm drainage improvements, enlargement of two retention basins, and construction of a new three-lane pavement surface with turning lanes, a uh, new eight-foot wide multi-use pathway similar to what's in the phase one and then new driveway in entrances and handicap ramps. Uh, we, we got two bids on this. Uh, low bid was uh, meeting specifications and came in with Scotty's contracting at 
$773, um, and that's who we are recommending uh, for approval. Greg is here, and Melissa as well, to answer any questions on this uh, this bid. I mean, this is a high-quality company, but was this uh, under the pre-qualified <coughs> situation, the first one we've done? Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Any comments or questions? Big difference between these two bids. I wonder what caused that. Real big. Comments. Um, Mr. Mazel, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, it, it's uh, it's hard to say what what it could be. Uh, it could be that uh, one of the contractors was uh, really busy and thought that if he had to plan for this, he'd have to hire extra people, pay them more overtime, et cetera, et cetera. It's hard to say. It could be a, a myriad of, of issues, I guess, really. So we're fortunate to have, I think, really competitive bids. And I think we got a good, it, it appears we got a good price on this compared to the other bid, at least. That, that's so. what, it looks like you got a sale. Yeah. Thank you. Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilferson? Yes. Municipal Order 2018-139. Municipal Order authorizing payments to AT&T and Bowling Green Municipal Utilities for relocation of utilities for Small House Road Improvements Phase 2. So moved. Motion by Nash, second. There's three utilities that were involved that have uh, utilities in this next section that we're work, working on, AT&T, BGMU, and Atmos. Um, AT&T and BGMU have agreed to go in and do what they need to do for these prices listed in your packet. AT&T's uh, costs are going to be 15446 BGMU's price or cost are going to be 17000 uh, Atmos is also involved, but they're already working on a project there, and they're going to do their work at no cost because they're already, I believe, already having to. Melissa, you want to add to that? Or what the, did I explain, oh, might explain that they right? Are, upgrades are, are necessary, that, but they are in our way. Uh, but because of our agreement with Atmos, they move things that are in our right of way at no cost to the city. Is that the okay. franchise agreement? Right, so okay, Atmos typically right. does that. Um, they are rep uh, replacing some bare steel out there, which which they probably would need to do uh, in the long run anyway. So we're getting some new lines, uh, new service lines for both sides of the road at the same time. So I think it's good for everybody. And B. Jimmy is planning to replace the street lighting with LED for both the phase one section and the phase two section, so. Comments or questions? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilferson? Yes. First reading of Ordinance BG 2018-31. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning tracts of land containing 1.64 acres from RE residential estate and PUD planned unit development to HB Highway Business located on a portion of Zero Frist Boulevard and 570 Lovers Lane, presently owned by Green Hills Development Partners, LLC. So moved. Carriage and second. First reading of a unanimous recommendation from planning and zoning for rezoning. Is there any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Carriage Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. First reading of ordinance BG 2018-32. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a tract of land containing 48.69 acres from RS1D single family residential to PUD planned unit development located at Zero Plano Road, presently owned by Magnolia Hills LLC. Moved. Again, another unanimous recommendation from planning and zoning for a modification in their development. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? First reading of Ordinance BG 2018-33. Ordinance closing public right-of-way. Ordinance approving the closing of a portion of right-of-way located between 1169 and 1175 Clay Street. So moved. Second. Second. Um, it's a public right-of-way closing between uh, two businesses owned by the same individual. Um, Again, a unanimous recommendation from planning and zoning. We looked at it first. Are there any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Arigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Nash? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. 
last item on our agenda, we have a public comment section, but we'll take just a short recess to make sure everybody has an opportunity to sign up to speak so we can get the name and address of the speaker. So we'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right, we're back uh, for the public comment section of our meeting, and first up is Summer Bolton. In your comments. Good evening, my name is Summer Bolton. I live at 1535 Kenton Street, Lexington, 1999, Louisville, 1999, Covington, 2003, Frankfurt, the state capital, 2013, Moorhead, 2013, Vico, 2013, Danville, 2014, Midway, 2015, Paducah, 2018. These are the nine cities and towns in Kentucky which have adopted a fairness ordinance in the years they were adopted. I am here again to ask you to pass a fairness ordinance on behalf of my father, my family, and everyone else who lives with the effects of dis discrimination in our city. My father owned a business in Kentucky within a niche of his industry and became the most successful company in the state. He also sat on many state boards advocating for his clients' rights. Because we do not have a fairness ordinance in Bowling Green, he lost his business partnership due to discrimination of sexual orientation. My father's life was completely turned upside down. His legal action to fight this was not successful because gay people have no legal protections in Bowling Green and he lost his business he had built, as well as his comfortable lifestyle. The worst part for him during all of this was not um, his monetary wealth disappearing abruptly. It was that he could no longer um, give us, his six children, the opportunities he had before. As a parent, this was heartbreaking and frustrating to know he was powerless and forced to live in a state of limbo be 
because people like you don't see it fit to pass a fairness ordinance. Although my family recovered, not everyone in the Bowling Green LGBTQ community has been so lucky, and the pain of discrimination never goes away. People in our LGBTQ community stand behind you in line at Kroger, take your order at restaurants, and sit next to you in church. How can the city commission as a whole continue to deny this community the respect and dignity they deserve because you are afraid, you don't understand, or you're simply being a bully because you can? By denying this ordinance, you are denying good people their right to be secure financially and work without having um, to fear losing their job simply because of whom they love. But you're not only punishing them, you're punishing their families, friends, and loved ones. I urge you, allow Bowling Green to have the honor of being the 10th city in Kentucky to pass a fairness ordinance. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Mullen. I live at 1367 Clay Street, and I got to talk. Um, the suicide prevention, I want to do this so we can help the fight, for su fight against suicide, and I want to get life skills together and do this, and I'm going to do it, but I would like a city commission, somebody to stand up and say it's a good cause and would like to do it. So that's it. And also, um, also the grant, I would like each division to um, let a grant writer take a writing, grant writing class. And I would like a pedro license for a discount for the veterans and for the bikers. Because the veterans have deserve a discount in the pedro license. And it's kind of wrong that you don't, you haven't thought about it, because for some reason, Sue's for veterans, and I know that by her Facebook page. So, you know, it's up to you, but what I'm doing is fighting um, to get that Pedro license lowered, and I'm going to keep on, keep on doing it until we lower that Pedro license, and for the Fairness Act. So. Thank you. Last person on our list. Thank you for tuning in. Our next scheduled meeting is August 7th, 2018. Thank you very much.